Would you stand to your feet this morning? Would you just play real softly for me, my friend? My Father, we give you praise. It is in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, <laughs> that we do indeed triumph in all things. We do thank you. I thank you in advance for your presence, for your power, for your dominion, authority that you have bestowed upon each one of us who are your disciples, your sons and daughters. But more importantly, I thank you for victory that doesn't always look like victory, doesn't always feel like victory. But yet, if we just stay the course, you promise us that we will be victorious in all things. Father, I come against any distraction this morning, God, that would hinder your people from receiving from you, including myself and my ability to articulate your word. I thank you, God, for clarity of thought and clarity of speech. Jesus, you said in more than one place in your scripture, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. And so, Father, we do have ears to hear. We're not just gathered here because we didn't have anything else to do on a Sunday or a Sabbath day. We, we purposely came here. We've been intentional and deliberate in our efforts to get here this morning. Father, I know, because you've shared it with me, and many may know, but I know that there are some people of God who have literally had to overcome monumental obstacles, whether it be in the physical the, or, the, or the soulish realm. They're there, but they're here today. Hallelujah. That's, that's a form of triumph. Father, there are some that are facing financial crises that they never thought they'd encounter in this life. They've had good jobs and they've paid their bills on time and they've been faithful, but something has happened, God. But you caused them to triumph. There are some today, Father, who are facing diagnoses in their body and they, in their, in their, in their, in their minds, can't figure out how it got to this point. So I declare that they are victorious today. As they believe and receive your word and they act upon it, as was said, as they put it into motion, God, you're going to come through. You, you never fail. You always cause us to triumph. Father, I speak to family relationships now that you're mending and sealing and bringing back together again. Long estranged individuals who have left our lives inappropriately and, and incorrectly. God, we pull back our complaint and our anger and we release the power of love and forgiveness over them today and we say, God, make it right. Make the way, Lord, in the name of Jesus. So, my Father, you are so welcome in this place to do according to your own good pleasure. <laughs> Each one of us needs you this morning. Nobody is exempt from your love and your glory. Let your power rest upon this place today. Holy Spirit of God, we welcome you in such a strong and dynamic way that your presence is sensed not in just in the physical realm, but in a realm that surpasses all understanding. Let your people know and remind them today that you love them. Love us, Lord. I give you praise for that. I give you praise. I thank you for it. Let your grace and mercy permeate this place, God. We thank you and we give you praise. If you agree with that, come on, say amen. amen. Before you take your seats, just shake hands with somebody real quick. Smile at them real big and let them know you're glad that they're here this morning. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Glory be to God. <laughs> Glory be to God. You can take your seats this morning. I'm certainly glad. Thank you so much for your attentiveness and thank you for your patience as we move forward. Can I have 40 minutes on the clock, please? Certainly glad that you are here. And I want to take opportunity before I move too far and Welcome all of our first time guests. I know we've got some first time guests in here. Thank you so much for being in attendance. We appreciate you and we love the fact that you took your time to come out and hang out with us this morning. It is a big deal. Is it not Life Point? Can you show your love this morning? Amen. 
And while I have the attention of the YouTube audience, I'm certainly glad for those of you that are tuning in by, li by way of live stream or if you're watching this currently or if you watch it later, we're delighted that you took the opportunity to tune in to the LifePoint Christian Faith Center t t YouTube channel. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. We are located at 1221st Avenue in the city of Coralville, Iowa. We are at the intersection of I-80 and 1st Avenue in Coralville at the Radisson Hotel and Conference Center, which is our temporary home right now as we continue to believe God. God for the advancement of this vision and bring our building to pass. Somebody say amen. amen. We're delighted that you chose to, to do this. So we invite you to get something to write with. Take some good notes. We won't waste your time, but we expect that you'll hear from God this morning. And if you don't have a local church, do not fellowship anywhere. We invite you to come down. We've got a warm seat of welcome here for you. Ladies and gentlemen, would you show our YouTube audience some love this morning? Yeah. Praise God forevermore. Well, I, I am excited, you know, which is not unusual for me. Some people say I'm a little too excited, but, you know, I just like to think that I have energy. It's all right. Yeah, I ain't got to say nothing. It's OK. I, I know my wife knows that my energy level sometimes fluctuates just like yours. Amen. And so but when I come into the house of the Lord, I try not to be uh, unenergetic or less than enthused because enthusiasm is contagious. So is a humdrum, low down, don't want to be here spirit or attitude. Amen. 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 I'm going to invite you. I'm going to invite your attention. I want you to turn to two places in scripture for me. First of all, turn with me to the book of Numbers. Numbers. The 16th chapter of the book of Numbers, if you would, please. I want to read something, share it with you, and just see where the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, takes us this morning. I believe he's got something that he wants me to bring out in this area, so I'm going to do my best to be obedient. Is that all right? Okay. Number 16. And when you get it, we're going to start at verse 1. Number 16 and 1. If you have it, say amen. 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 Praise God. Number 16 and 1. All right, let's read. I'm going to read from the King James Version here. It says, Now Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Ibram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. Please note that they were sons of Reuben, or they were the children, descendants of Reuben. Amen? Verse 2, And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. Verse 3 says, And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, or why then? In other words, he's out there asking the question. Then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. And he spake unto Korah and to all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. Verse six, this do. In other words, let's do this, Moses says. Take you censers or containers, Korah and all his company, because they're going to get ready to offer a, a incense, a burnt offering in that regard. And put fire therein and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, you sons of Levi. And Moses said unto Korah, verse 8, Here I pray you, you sons of Levi, Seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel hath separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them? And he hath brought thee, verse 10, near to him and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with them and seek ye the priesthood also." I want to look at verse nine for a minute, and I want to also uh, do this, if that's OK. I want to read it from the expanded Bible. You guys know me. I like to use that that text. Verse nine from the expanded Bible says. Well, I don't want to use that one. I better use this. one. Verse nine from the expanded Bible of number 16 says something that's interesting that 
really caught my attention. Stay where you are. And I'm going to read it from the expanded Bible. How many of you have an expanded Bible? Anybody? Hey, Amen. Good, good, good. How you, how you liking it? Is it all right? It's not the best study Bible in the world, but it is. Yeah, it does. It does. We, interesting enough, we've got a, we've got a, I've got, we've got a, um, we've got, but my sister-in-law, I can tell on her, but I'm not going to mention her name. She'll know who she is. But my wife's sister called us, has been calling my wife. Now, she's how, how much older? She, uh, she'll be 76. So she, well, you told her age. I didn't tell her age. I was just asking how much older she was. So you telling your age, why are you telling her age? I'm just saying. So, <laughs> <laughs> See, I know you don't care. Her sister is 20 years older than her. And we've been believing God. My, my, my wife, um, I'm trying to say how to say this, but my wife is the only one in her family that is born again. And there's a couple that are somewhere in there. You know what I'm saying? There's a gray area there. I don't know. So I don't judge him, but that's fine. But this oldest sibling... Um, has been turned off to the things of God for years, whole, her whole life. Now, she pushing 80. It's a long time to be turned off to God. Amen? But I'm a firm believer that, you know, a whole lot of us don't need God till we either get sick, get old, your definition of old, or we get in a circumstance that we create and we need God to get us out. Am I talking to anybody this morning? Yes, so the reason why I say that is because I told her, I said, you need to, she, she called us up. I know I ain't even just, can I have some latitude? I'm going to take it anyway, whether you give it to me or not. <laughs> she, she called us up and she was, I heard her one night talking to my, to my wife, you know, uh, she was on the phone and my wife started answering questions possible about revelation. And I'm like, Revelation? How you get to Revelation and you don't even know how to find Genesis in the Bible? I'm saying that metaphorically because, see, you got to start where you at. Most folks ain't ready for revelational study. But I'm thankful that she asked the question. Now, I'm saying that because we were in Walmart not too long ago and she called again. And I said, listen, let's talk when we get home. We got to the house. I said, well, you need to buy you a Bible that you can read. Yes, amen. Uh, You understand? This is why I mentioned the expanded Bible. Because the Expanded Bible is a good Bible for people to be able to read, especially if you haven't spent a whole lot of time in studying the word. Because the King James Version can really throw you for a loop if you're not careful. Amen. Amen. Okay. Side, you know, I didn't cost you nothing except a little time. All right. <laughs> uh, 16 and 9. Once again, 16 and 9. Uh, let me find my place here. The God of Israel has separated, it says, divided you from the rest of the Israelites. Can I say it this way? From the rest of the congregation and this assembly of Israel he brought you near to himself write this down to do the work in the Lord's holy tent he brought you near to himself to do the work in the Lord's holy tent or tabernacle and to stand before all of the Israelites or the congregation and say with me serve 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 them do you see that so there was a purpose in this He goes on to say, isn't that enough or is that too little for you? Now, with that being said, I want you to turn over to 1 Corinthians 13. And I'm going to tie this together by the leading of the Holy Spirit as best I can. 1 Corinthians 13, commonly known as the love chapter. How many of y'all didn't know it's called the love chapter? Be honest. Be honest. Y'all ain't going to raise your hand. Y'all going to be honest. Okay. That's why I'm telling you, you need to get in the word. Don't start revelation until you find out about love. Amen. I'm just, I'm just trying to help you out. I ain't. <laughs> I'm trying to, right? right. Yes, yes. Paul talks about love in such a way here that, that it begins to make real good sense. Now, let's, as you find 1 Corinthians 13, just stop. Just don't start reading. Don't start reading. Just hold it. Verse 1. Okay. I want to say something regarding Korah and the people that were in him in his rebellion. Korah was a leader. The Bible says that they had princes. They had people that he had influence over people who had renown. They were famous. They were quality, high level people who could who could uh, interpret and and influence many. And. 
Korah, the Bible lets us know that Korah was a descendant of a man named Reuben. How many of you ever heard of Reuben in the Bible? Come on, y'all can talk to me this morning. Y'all awake this morning? I had two cups of coffee. I don't know how many y'all had, but come on. Reuben was prophetically declared over to, I, I almost need to turn it. Reuben was prophetically declared over by his father to be, first of all, because he was the firstborn, he was a natural leader by selection. Come on now. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm the youngest of eight. Adrian, so I, I didn't get to pick. I just kind of fell into the eighth slot. You feeling me? So with that being said, my, our oldest brother, by birth selection, was the one that kind of opened the womb of my mom, our mom. Come on now. So because of that, here, here Reuben is. He's the one that should be establishing and continuing the, fi- the, the family line of success because he is in a family of great renown and significance and power. Come on now. And because of this, Reuben, he didn't choose it. It just fell to him. He has the ability to, to steer either in one way or the other. How many of y'all got, got at least one sibling? Could you raise your hand just so I can identify? Okay, that's the vast majority. You got at least one sibling. Now, whether you were the older one punking the younger one, or you the younger one punking the older one, I don't know, teasing the older one, whatever it was, you did not pick where you fell. Can I help you this morning? It is God that chose you out of your family. You didn't choose yourself. You didn't go to God and say, okay, God, now choose me. Before you even had the, the, the wherewithal and the intellect or the capacity to say that I need God, God had already determined a plan for your life. And what we've done, hallelujah, thank God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he has quickened us now to recognize that our, our life really does mean something. It does have significance. Now, the problem with that is that if we don't follow the right leading, we find ourselves at like the three degrees ministry deal says we find ourselves off course. And the next thing you know, we think we're serving God and we find out that we really haven't been doing anything but serving ourselves. Got a whole lot of churches filled this morning with with, you know, uh, people that are really serving themselves. That's why they go to church, but not you. I said, but not you. You're here because you recognize the awesome power of God and you recognize like the old folks used to say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, you don't even know where you'd be. You know, so so with that, though, we've got to come to a place of recognizing recognizing why it is that God chose us. Now, if you're like me, I mean, we, we we've got we're we're a family of eight siblings, all of us living, all of us serving the Lord. Hallelujah. But everybody had to make the choice to honor God and obey the call that was on our lives. Ooh, help me, Lord, this morning. Reuben, as, a, as an example, his dad says to him, after examining his life, and I'm going to tell you why, he says to him, Reuben, you are unstable as water. Now, let's, let's let that sink in for a minute. <laughs> let that sink into your thinking for a minute. You do have your thinking caps on, right? Think about the stability of water. There is only one way that water, that I know of, that water as as a chemical H2O is stable. And that is by being frozen. You got it. So Reuben is not frozen. Or in other words, he's not solid. His dad didn't say that, that, you know, I mean... (laughs) Come on now, if it got cold, it gets cold now. Oh, God, I hate the cold. If it gets cold now, it got cold then. I, I don't know. They didn't have refrigerators. I don't know, you know, how they, if they, if they, they had stuff. I, you don't either, so stop looking at me like that. <laughs> Did it snow in that land? It snows there now. Why wouldn't it snow then? Oh, yeah, I ain't going to get nothing. I'm going to come over here. Y'all, are y'all, y'all awake yeah, this morning? Yeah, preach, man, preach. Huh? So, so if his dad could have used a reference, a different reference in regards to Reuben, but he chose to tell him you are unstable, which means that that same 
chemical composition H2O that Jesus encountered when the ship was in distress and his disciples were on it. And the next thing you know, they see this thing, this person, Peter's looking out and it's somebody's walking on something that is unstable. There has got to be an understanding of how unstable water really is or Jesus walking on it is no real miracle. It's not designed to hold you up. It's designed to hydrate you. Isn't that right? It's designed to cause your body to remain fluid. If you're like me, I don't drink enough water. So Reuben, by his own, his own father's pronouncement, is called unstable. Now, it'd be one thing. <laughs> well, let's talk about real quick, real quick, real quick, because I don't want to belabor the point. But the reason why Reuben is primarily called unstable mm -hmm. is he slept mm -hmm. with somebody mm -hmm. who didn't belong to him. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Help me, Lord. Mm -hmm. For a generation of people that are looking for God to do great things, we've got to learn who we should be in bed with and who we should not be. I'm not throwing stones. I don't know. I don't know anybody's living situation. I don't know. I only, only living situation I know is she and I. And so you may think it to be insignificant, but can I please tell you that the same God that allowed his father to pronounce this over him and then watched as the generational pronouncement hit the lives of Korah and on and all these individuals was waiting for somebody to repent and turn it around. See, what God, always, what God always does is he gives us a way out. Uh, the best way out I know is the blood of Jesus and repentance of sin. I don't know a better way. There's no other sacrifice, the Bible says, that will ever be given. Now, you can make case for, for Korah and his crew that they didn't have that, but there was sacrifice being made that all they had to do was accept it. Now, I want to look at why, <laughs> why this is significant. Let, now, to get it, you got that part. Go with me to 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. Are you there? Okay, good thing for me to get there. How about that? 1 Corinthians 13, I'm going to read this. Well, let me see where I'm going to read it from. Probably from two passages of scripture, but thank you, Lord. Are you all right? Okay. 1 Corinthians 13. The Apostle Paul writes here, and, and this, is, this is concluding the fruit of love, for lack of a better term. The Apostle Paul writes here with an understanding, again, I've said this before in times past, that the Corinthian church was vile, they were immature, they were selfish, they were ones who practiced sleeping with anybody that would slow down long enough to be slept with, yep. be they male or female. They didn't have a problem throwing their children into the fire because that's the way they were raised. I don't mean to be crude and certainly don't take it that way, but they would sleep with animals if the animal stopped moving long enough. You know, that sounds like, well, why are you mentioning that? Because I want you to understand the depths of depravity that humanity gets to without the fruit of the spirit operating in their life. So it is no wonder that we have all of this chaos going on in our society, you know, depending on which end of the side of the aisle you sit, whether you're Democrat, Republican, you know, independent, Green Party, doesn't matter. All that doesn't matter. You do know that. Doesn't matter a bit. What matters is where is the love that God designed and desires from the people of God? And because because in every listen, every congregational setting, you have the potential for the spirit of Reuben to rise up where people think more of themselves than they really are. But not life point. Say not life point. Y'all didn't say it like you meant. I said not life point. Turn to somebody. Say not me. Not me. Are, are you feeling me this morning? But what happens is when people lose the understanding of how important it is to serve. God, help me. 
And see, see, it is necessary, and I'm going to show it to you in just a minute, it is necessary that I go above and beyond to serve somebody else because that is how my love is demonstrated, not just through my verbal expression. Oh, I love you. Don't tell me you love me. Find a way to serve. Oh, God. Not just serve. Don't just serve Mandy because she's my friend, but serve somebody who you don't necessarily like being around. Because you really don't know how your love is until you rub up against somebody that you can't stand. And I know you look holy and special and all that. You feel real good about yourself. But there is somebody in and around your life that you really don't hope you see tomorrow. (laughs) You could go a whole week, month, year without seeing some folks. And I know you say it is sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. But the bottom line is that love is an expression that must be demonstrated, not just said. And up until the time when Korah and all of the crew and, 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 and Moses led them into until man, when they were going, when they were coming out of Egypt and all the flies and the, and the frogs and all the lice were being left behind. And the, and the, and the army of, of, of Egypt was swallowed up by the Red Sea and they got to the other side. Everything was cool until they got some time on their hands and had an opportunity to sit back and be critical. Mm. You know, we don't know how really how (laughs) critical we can be until we get by ourselves. Mm, 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 mm. And and, and Cora, Cora was see, I have to believe that Cora was critical before he had an audience. But when he had an audience, it gave him an opportunity to try to influence the audience to come on his side. Now, if that don't sound like some church folks, I don't know. Everything's good as long as it's going your way. Well, the true essence of love doesn't go your way. The intent of love, by the way, love has a name. Love is a person. <laughs> and so Paul writes here, and I'm gonna, we're going to talk just a few minutes about some of these aspects of love. Is that all right? How much time do I have? Okay, thank you. First of all, let's go to verse four. You, you know the rest. If you don't, go back and read it yourself. And I wrote this in my margin. The sum of all things is love. That's what it boils down to. All right. Verse three says, I may give away everything I have. I may even give my body as an offering to be burned. But I gain nothing if I do not have, say, love. Verse four, love is patient and kind. Oh, I got to go somewhere else here. I'm going to stay right there. But I want to get another translation. Put the, if you have the Amplified Bible, would you put that up there for me, please? Amplified says this so well. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise God. I don't have an Amplified Bible, so. Glory to God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Mm-hmm. Thank you, God. Now, this is important so much so because. Again, we're we're finishing up on this aspect of it, but I want to make sure that you understand just how important this whole series is on the fruit of the spirit. It it really is. It really is. Okay. now. Love endures with patience and serenity or patience and kind, patient and kind. Love is kind and thoughtful. And is not jealous or envious. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. Stay right there for a minute. Many times, and I know I've learned this not only in life, when I was in the military, I really learned this. uh, Because, you know, you got to kind of keep your head on a swivel sometimes because, you know, you come into the come into the military, depending on how you come in, whether you come in as an officer or enlisted. I was enlisted. Uh, but there's always somebody that outranks you. Always, 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 always somebody outranks you. Always, always, always. And and so what happens is you see people do things that are, you know, in the military. So anybody ever been in the military? OK, a couple of you. All right. You see people do some of the dumbest things in the military. Yep. It's like they just, you know, I, <laughs> I, sometimes the side stories help. I don't know if they help or not, but. I, was in, I, I went to basic training. I was in basic training in, in uh, June of 1983. And uh, I was in, the, in, in uh, Texas. We were in San Antonio, Texas. And we got there, you know, and I was a little bit older than some of the other guys there. But we got there, and these, they herd us in at night, literally. They bring us in at night. And when they bring us in, they, they have all this noise, like her horn. 
you know, that she had, you know, the mock shofar, you know, she, I mean, it was just, you know, and you notice, you know, anyway, I better stop there. Anyway, so, I mean, it was noisy, it was loud, it was loud, and they ran us all in, and, and we're standing there, and you got to stay, you don't know what to do, so why not just stand still? Right? Mike made sense to me. I mean, I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I ain't going to try to be cool. I'm just going to stand still till somebody tell me something to do. And we were standing there and I just, you know, pick a bunk, get somewhere, get a, get a, get a, get a, get a you know, guys making noise. And so I'm standing there and this young kid, I don't know how old he was. This, this guy, they called him T.I.'s in the Air Force, training instructor, got in his face and ran up to him. He wasn't going to touch him. You knew that. Didn't you know that? Ain't nobody, I mean, they wasn't going to touch you. And he got up in his face and she yelled and screamed at him. The kid turned around, opened his security drawer, and threw up all in the security drawer. Aww. I know, right? Why am I saying that? Because I learned what not to do by seeing somebody else do something stupid. Right. And there's a lot of people that do stupid things, and people just act like, you know, you know I, I'm watching. <laughs> Corey did a stupid thing. Anybody that was around him should have figured out that, you know what, you don't challenge this man of God. Amen. Right? Amen. So, so you can learn as much by, by what people do, you know, you know, so you just don't do that. Don't, don't, don't make the same mistake. That's why we don't stay in church till 2 o'clock. I ain't got to preach an hour and a half to you. There's always next Sunday by God's grace. If I, keep, if I preach till 3 o'clock, how many of y'all coming back next Sunday? Don't raise your hands. Y'all know good and well y'all ain't coming back here. Look, he, pastor don't know what time it is. He, we need to buy pastor a watch. <laughs> I don't want to say, take the watch off. Put the watch on. Put it on. Anyway, love endures with patience, right? And serenity. Love is kind, thoughtful. Come on now. This is just how we should act anyway, is it not? And is not jealous or envious. We got to stop this whole jealousy thing that creeps up in the church. It's demonic and it's devilish. And you know what it does? It creates sex. S-E-C-T-S. It creates clicks. If I can push up next to Pastor Lynette, then maybe, and I can get in her favor, you know, then maybe, maybe, you know, I'll serve Pastor Lynette. Mm. But I ain't going I ain't thinking about serving Kelsey. Cause you know what? <laughs> Do I need to finish that sentence? I can't Kelsey. And 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 so what happens is what happens is it causes a spirit of envy to rise up because you know what? Why do bells get to sit on the front row? What's so special about Dave and Janice? I ain't going to say it to their face. I'll get somewhere and, you know. But, but see, all of it is a manifestation of the same thing. Let's keep going. Give me the next verse, please. Verse 5. It's, it is not rude. I could preach here all day long. It is not rude. How... Dare we, as people of God, representing the Most High, Jesus, was not, Jesus wasn't even rude to the religious people. He was truthful. And some of us call our oh, ugly attitude as being truthful, and in all actuality, it's just rude. You would turn off to people. <laughs> I'm going to be very careful and tread very lightly here, but I'm going to show, be honest. Uh, one of the things that uh, one of the things that I have prayed for, she and my wife and I, some of you that know me have been around us long enough. You know, uh, I, I, I pray for rude people to find another church. You know, and, and, and well, you know, and I'll be honest with you, you know, uh, my first prayer is that they repent. But if, if they re if, if they don't repent, I pray they find somewhere else to go to church because I don't I don't even like being around rude people. I, you know, uh, you know, we got people that, that try to befriend everybody in the church. And the reason why they're befriending everybody in the church is so that they can have some measure of influence over them, making it think like they are something more than they than they actually are. If you really want to show me how dedicated you are, find some place to serve in the church. Amen. I ain't getting no amens from that side that I could hear. <laughs> you know, it, <laughs> 
<laughs> I got to be careful what doors I open. Uh, yeah, you know, it, 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 last Sunday we had all of these people up here uh, for, for helps ministry. And somebody said, that's most of the church. Yeah, but that ain't all the church. And, you know, I can say I can talk this all day long. One of the one of the things I found out how much time I have. One of the things I found out when I was coming up, I was coming up under this man of God's ministry. Uh, you know, it, I realized that God, what God had done in my life was so terrific and so amazing. I needed to give back. And some of us have lost the understanding of how powerful the salvation of your soul really is. You are not going to hell because of the promise of the father. He paid the price and somehow or another, we got to translate that payment of price to, to saying, look, I got something I got to give back. Mm. Okay, let me keep going. It is, it is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not provoked or overly sensitive. Stay right there. Overly sensitive, touchy. Can't nobody say nothing to you because they don't know how you gonna, whether you're going to spout off but they, you know, I'm trying to make sure I say it the right way. <laughs> you know, you got some people you walk up to in church. And you don't know what, they look at you so mean. You, 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 you want to cuss me out? <laughs> Y'all think I'm kidding. We were, we, were in a service, we were in a service in the church in Chicago. I won't name the name of the minister. doesn't matter. You guys would know it. And she and I, you know, as ministers, you know, we have, <clears throat> because we're part of the uh, Fellowship Alliance of Churches, you know, they, they ask you, this is what they do. They ask you to come in. Now, you're talking about a church of, of 15, 20,000 people. So everybody can't just have their way. Yeah. Or you're going to have chaos. You can't even do it in here. Everybody have their way in here. You have chaos and mess. Amen. And the folks that come in as guests can pick up on mess quicker than they can pick up on anything else. Yeah. They can't necessarily pick up on love, but they can pick up on mess. Yeah. They can pick up on disorder. This place is dysfunctional. And everybody jumping around, hallelujah, and all this kind of stuff, and everybody crazy. Not life point. And we walked in the service, we were standing there, and I don't know, we, we, I don't know if it was our first time there, or second time there. So she and I, they asked us to stand over here as, as because of our position, senior pastor. So we stood, stood over here, and there were other people over here, and they come and they walk you in and they seat you. And you know, sometimes when I'm sitting, I don't care about, I like sitting up front, not just because I'm pastor. I was like this when I was, like I said, back in the day. I want to sit up front because I don't want to miss nothing. Yeah. I'm that kind of guy. Put me in the front. I want to put it where they say, come up near, near the front, near where the fire, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I, I, I want to be right there. But in this church, I was going to be wherever they said be. So they walked us in. We sat down. And we're sitting there. And I thought it was a pretty good seat, man. I could see the front. And, whoo, boy, this is great. Looking around, beautiful, beautiful facility. And the next thing you know, I see this lady. We see these ladies come up. And, 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 and I can't borrow you. I guess you got your lap for it, they come up and she this lady comes up to the to the row where just in, just a little bit in front of us and pulls another lady in and says, come on, come on, come on. We sit right here because the seats were open, but the seats were not open. They were reserved. She sat she sat down there. Am I telling the truth? She sat down there with her friend and her friend was so embarrassed so embarrassed, you can see it all, you know, when people are embarrassed, you see it on your face. This friend was so embarrassed that she was like, her, her affect was, was off. She was looking down instead of looking up. And so, and this is praise and worship going on. And so, there, you know, so, so the one lady who was, back in the day, we used to call it Bogarden, you know, she just going to rush her way up, bum rush. She go, she's up there, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. She loud. She's, she's, she's drawing attention to herself. That ain't God. And so her buddy's like, she, I think she sat down. Did she sit down? Because she, 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 you, knew, you knew this was going to happen. There was a head usher. I need a head usher, somebody. There was a head usher that was coming to correct that injustice. And that lady knew it. And, and you could tell she knew it. And so she sat there and she was trying to worship the Lord, the one that was sitting down. The other one was all bodacious and everything. And the head usher comes up on the side of the row. And this is while full blown and TV cameras blasting and telling the lady, you need to you need to come out. Come out. And the lady's like. She ain't thinking about this guy. I'm, this is a true story. She is not thinking. She, look, she has turned her eyes, averted her eyes. And, you know, she would close them, but she wasn't sure he was going to snatch her. So she kept her eyes open. I'm telling the truth. 
And so she kept her eyes open, calling herself praising the Lord. Now, you know as well as I do, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't getting nothing accomplished. Because it's all about her. And so the end of that story was the usher, he stood up there and he's, he, he was patient. He was reserved and restrained. And there was all kinds of men, men and women of God around that could have helped him. And, and he just looked at her and said to her and he whispered something in her ear. And I know full well that one of the things he said to her is you are in error and you're wrong. The other lady, what she do? He said, ma'am. And she got up, walked around her buddy and left with him appropriately. You know, all I'm saying is that people do all kinds of crazy stuff in church and think it's God. And, and, and you know, we, we, as a, we as a people are attempting to try to figure out why we're not more blessed. Can I tell you, stand up, Elder. You. Just stand right there. He, he is a part of the administrative function of this church. You think what he does doesn't affect this house? Huh? I need, I need, who am I looking for? You can sit down. You. Stand up, Juana. Stand up real quick for me. Juana, Juana serves in children's ministry, right? Where else are you serving these days? Huh? Greeting. Greeting. I thought so. That's one of the reasons why I asked you to stand up. You can sit down. If somebody comes to the door and Juan is rude, they ain't gonna stay long enough to hear the message. What do I want to hear the message for? I already got a message when I hit the door. How, how about the fact when there ain't nobody at the door because our greeters are late for serving? It got quiet up in here. Huh? You know, this whole thing is about the edification of others. This has, this has very little to do with us. That's why I read, that's why I told, we quoted 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Now thanks be unto God, yes. who's always, who always causes us to triumph. In See, I'm already triumphant, baby. Yeah. And as long as I'm in position where I'm supposed to be when I'm supposed to be there and I'm serving how I'm supposed to serve, I'm supposed to serve with love first. Yeah. I'm supposed to let joy come right behind it. Huh? I'm the joy of the Lord is my man. I, I remember back in the day I was cleaning toilets and I was doing it with joy. How many of you ever cleaned the toilet with joy? Come on, somebody. I mean, you know, I remember when I was out here cutting the grass and it was hot and getting bit by flies and all this, but I was doing it with joy. Because the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. It gives me the endurance to be able to make another Sunday. I don't know about you, but God don't mind you quitting on Sunday as long as you pick up again on, on the next Sunday. I ain't never going back to that church. That's your problem. Oh, I didn't get off topic. Amen. <laughs> so, so it is not easily angered. It does not take into account a wrong endured. I think the King James says a suffered wrong. I'm going to stop right there because I could go on all day, but I'm going to stop right there. Too many of us. Mm, help me, God. See, here's the problem that Korah had. Here's the problem that his ancestor Reuben had. Reuben's problem, close your Bibles. Reuben's problem is that he felt wrong by his daddy. And because he felt like his daddy didn't pay enough attention to him because he was, after all, the first in the family line. Because of that, he decided to take something that did not belong to him. Now, in this representation, it is a it is a woman. OK, but can I tell you that many times we take things that don't belong to us, particularly in the area of honor and love, because we feel like maybe we've been overlooked in our lives. You can never, ever measure God's love for you based on a human existence. And, and in other words, if I come up and I'm talking to, to Elder Janice and I'm, I'm focused on Elder Janice, Elder Dave can't come up and say, well, you spent too much time talking to my wife. As long as what we're saying is appropriate, then that should never enter into the equation. But when we somehow get love confused and we think that love is, a, is, is, is based more on, on what, I, what I say than what I do, then you will always be confused by love. I heard this years and years ago. Let's see how, don't answer. Y'all, uh, all y'all, but I know you too. You either. You either. Y'all, I'm going to see how astute you are. 
How do you show your pastor that you love him or her? By your actions. I heard something back here. Say again. Serve. That's good. Now, I said pastor. I didn't say church. How do you show your pastor that you love him or her? No, you cannot. No, you can't either. Come on now. Y'all know this. Y'all supposed to know it. Come on. Anybody going to, any, look, anybody going, I don't want, you know how it is when the professor asks something, it's like, I ain't real sure I know that answer, so I'm going to just be quiet. It's easy. Can I, huh? He said love. But how do you show, how do you show him or her? You know how? By doing what you did this morning. Show up. See, that didn't go over very well, but they're not pastors. Huh? Show up. Are you feeling me? Show up. You know, if, if, I got a, if I've got a restaurant, you know, you know, I'm not prophetically declaring anything, but if I'm owning a restaurant, you, you understand what I'm saying? I'm glad. I appreciate all the Facebook posts, but show up. Let me know you love the food. You like the cooking. Oh, God, help me somebody. Do you like the cooking or is it just a man? I ain't going back there no more. The prices are too high. Well, if it's good enough, who cares what the price is? Man, I go to Ruth's Chris whenever I'm in Kansas City. I go to Ruth's Chris for a reason. And Ruth's Chris is better than this steakhouse they got on the corner. I'm sorry, but what's that? What's that? Longhorn? Ain't got nothing on Ruth's Chris. How many of y'all been to Ruth's Chris? Y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. Ruth's Chris is the best, one of the best steakhouse chains on the, in, the, in the United States. What makes it good is that they take time and prepare a good meal so that when I go in, baby, I'm treated like royalty. I go in feeling good and come out feeling better. That's how your church is supposed to be. You can't eat everybody's cooking. You don't know what. Some people can't figure out why they feel sick. They don't, where'd you eat? Well, I was at McDonald's for lunch and Burger King for dinner. You know, and I was over here, you know, and I don't know. I just got gastrointestinitis or some crazy thing. You had, and, and there's church folks like that, too. They so confused. They don't know whether they're born again or whether they got to repent because they're a sinner saved by grace. That's because they eat everybody's cooking. Oh, God, I know I'm preaching. Look, my, look, I, I, I'm finishing. I, when, I took my wife to, when I took my wife to Ruth's Chris in Kansas City, bro, look, it was our anniversary. And see, some guys ain't figured this out. You got to do it right. You, you, you got to do it the right way. You know, I, if I want to go to, if I want to take my wife out for an anniversary meal, we're not going to Burger King. I'm just saying. Okay? You know, we've been together 30 years. I think we can up it a little bit. I want my game to be tight, baby. I want it to look, look, so when you go in, you go in, uh, you know, I made the reservations. Y'all ain't saying that. I took care of the details, men. I made sure, look, the, 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 the valet came to open the door. I said, no, 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 I got this. We got in there, man, and, and she wasn't feeling good. And so, you can close your bottles. I think I told you already. We got in there, she wasn't feeling good. And I tell you what, love had a name that day. It was Tommy Lee Roberts Sr. Man, they brought out the thing. Man, they knew it was our anniversary. I had already told them all that good. I told them what she liked, what she doesn't like. And they, they catered it all for us. And so we got in there. She endured she could barely eat it, but we and she endured. We got in there, and, and they brought the check. And I didn't act like I hadn't been there before. I did my homework. I did my research. I made sure. They didn't come up short. I'm like, la, 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 wait a minute now. If you're going to do it for one, you got to do it for all. We got done in there. That, that, that server was so polite. She was so professional. I knew why, because she was looking to make a tip. She know where she working at. If you, if you a tightwad, if you cheap, don't go in there. Don't be writing Jesus saves is your tip. No, 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 no. <laughs> Man, we got done. Boss, we got done, we went back out to the car. I drove her around the waterfront. Because love has a name. Now, who you think is inspiring me? Hari Krishna? No, that's Jesus Christ. <laughs> we got done. We got back to our room. It was our anniversary. We had taken some time off and it was all cool. And she was not feeling good. And I just said, baby, that's okay. You just lay down. 
It's all good. Are you feeling me? And so when I say that, I'm saying that to you because, see, everything, everything carries a message. Everything that you do carries a message. Everything that you do. When Corey and his rebellious crew, it wasn't, and, and Moses said it, he said, you, know, you ain't doing nothing to me. You out here acting ugly. You're not acting ugly towards me. You are acting ugly to the living God, and he shall repay. And bless God, he paid them back. Now, I, I, don't, I don't mean to sound critical or harsh or judgmental, but I'm going to tell you. You know, you got to figure out some place where is your place in, in the body. Are you feeling me? Don't just, be, don't just come and be a taker. I got quiet up in this church. You was doing pretty good when you was talking about the steakhouse store. I just, you know, Pastor, I just let you know. Talking about you want me to be here. I'm going to be here because I'm here to judge you. <laughs> I'm kidding, y'all. Like, no. But you know what? The, the greatest expression that you will ever have in the house of God is to is to have not just the desire, because the Bible says it is God who worketh in you both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. And what 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 Korah saw and what you cannot see is that he saw himself as being insignificant. So he had to find a way to pull others around him. And I'm telling you, I, we, we have had it try to manifest in this church. And I'm telling you what, I will cut it off. I will cut, cut it down and cut it off at the root. Amen. I will protect the integrity of this church with my very life. Amen. People talking that little, that little, what do you call it? Um, huh? Whisper. God, I hate whispering people, man. Why are you whispering? What's so, what's so, what's so secretive? You ain't, you ain't MI6 or something like that. What you, you ain't CIA. Why are you whispering? You got something to say? Say it. Let's be men. Let's be women. I don't like what you have on. Okay. Go buy me a new suit then. Done. Are we clear here? Military. Say crystal, sir. Stand to your feet. <laughs> Y'all funny. Y'all some funny people. Y'all funny. But I know you love the Lord, do you not? I told you, I said this a long time ago. I don't want to be a part of a church where, where we can't laugh and have fun. You know, as youth pastors, my wife and I were youth pastors. I told men, if, this, if, this, if, it, if it ain't fun, I don't want to play. You know, let me take my Bible and go home. You got so many people in churches now that they, you know, what's that? If, what's the, if, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it. If you're happy and you know it. If you're happy and you know it, then you're. That's the part. Then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Now see they they, they see see y'all were smooth for a minute ago. Now they got you. Big. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then you. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. One more. Can we do one more? If you're happy and you know it, jump for joy. If you're happy and you know it, jump for joy. If you're happy and you know it, then you If you're happy and you know it, jump for joy. Amen. Give the Lord some praise. Amen. <laughs> oh, Father, we give you praise. We worship, love you, appreciate you. Had to be the Holy Ghost. Amen. I ain't thought about that. I get with my grandbabies and they just say all kinds of things. You know, if you're not careful, it causes you to lose an anointing. Not in a bad way, not in a bad way. You know, you think you're all pious and special and, you know, they could care less about Papa being a preacher or the pastor of the church. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Papa, I need, I want. Papa, 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 Papa. My grandson, my, my next to the youngest grandson, Dominic, will walk up, just slap Papa in the face, you know? <laughs> it's his love expression. It's not hard. It's just, you know, he'll come jump on me and I'm not even expecting, you know what I'm saying? Ugh, because Papa will catch me. We need to get that way with our heavenly Papa. He'll catch you. He doesn't have a problem with you coming up. You know, some of us act ugly and slap him in the face. He just says, I love you. I sent Jesus for you. If you don't know that this morning, would you just kind of 
kind of pray with me. If you don't know that Papa, that God, our Heavenly Father, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, loves you. He loves you unconditionally. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, God. Woo! Thank God he loves me unconditionally. So, so when I have not intended to act ugly or I've not intended to be rude, when I've lacked the serving that comes with being in the house of God and a true member of the family, all I do is say, Papa, I'm sorry. Show me where. Show me how to make it better. Show me where to change it up. And I'll do what you say do. Is anybody willing to do that tonight? Oh, bless the Lord. Some of you, I understand you're not partners with the church. That's fine. We're getting ready to have our next partners class on next Saturday. By God's grace, should the weather be compliant, we're going to have that. And I'm delighted for those of you that signed up. But I invite you to find a place in the house to serve. It's very important. It's important to the sex, success, not only of the church, but more importantly, of your own personal success. It is the way that God defines your reward system as much as anything else, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget that. When we go to heaven, we're not going to heaven and everybody's going to be living on the same streets. Y'all do know that. Some of us are going to have bigger houses than others. I hope y'all know that. Some of us are going to be endowed with more authority than others. And it's going to be based on your willingness to have served others. Jesus says, no, later, no greater love hath a man than to lay his life down for them. He says, this one, this commandment I give to you, that you love others as I have loved you and gave his life for us. Are you willing to give your life for people that don't know Jesus this morning? I pray you are. Father, we thank you, give you praise, worship you, and bless you for all good things. Every good and perfect gift cometh from above, from the Father of lights, in whom is no variableness or no shadow of turning. God, there is no way to get anything bad out of you because it does not exist. Father, your people are here today, and some of them haven't laughed in a long time. And thank you for the humor that you have used by the Holy Ghost, Lord God, to cause them to smile again. I come against that spirit of depression and despondency. When they look at the news, they hear fear, warmongering, they hear rebellion, they hear just, just all kinds of uh, conflict. And I thank you, God, that that is not how your kingdom is built. So, Father, we look at this, and although we live in this earth, we are not of this earth. We are not of this world. We are supernatural beings living in a natural existence for today and as long as we have life in this body. I thank you, God, for the grace and the mercy of God and the word of God that shines into every man and woman's heart today. Bless them, Father, in a way that is tangible, Lord God, and even practical in the sense that they know that this is God. You have set their path on their feet on the path, Lord God, of great success and victory as you always cause us to triumph. I thank you for that, Father, and I thank you that you are empowering this church to do great and mighty things in this community, Lord God, and even abroad. As we increase our, our borders, we strengthen our, lengthen our stakes and, and, and increase our borders and our influence, God, that each one of us today is an ambassador for Jesus Christ. So as we go out here, we demonstrate love at such a level that men and women are drawn to you as they see in us the Christ of the kingdom. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Can you say amen?